Hello, everybody. This is going to be a demo of a new uh, soft search UI um, page for the um, advisor view. So if we go into one of our advisors, we can use one that's completed already. Go here. Um, this advice five months ago, blah, blah, blah. If we go over here, there this use this tab right here used to be blurred out. It's a more detailed tab, similar to like environments or licenses or stack info. This tab is specific for the dependency tree. So if we go over here, a little two window or two uh, two area screen pops up. We get a list. Um and this is if you think about like a hierarchy tree, and this is we're looking at pip file as our, our root and TensorFlow is a child of that. And we can see the dependency count for this uh, child. So TensorFlow being the only um, dependency added to the pip file is the only one in this list. And it's got 21 dependencies. You can uh, see some general information about the pip file. So you can see it's got one dependency being TensorFlow and you can get total size, which is just an aggregate of all the other of the of TensorFlow and I believe also the indirect dependencies of TensorFlow. It's dependencies and indirect dependencies. So you can see like the total size of this install is 1.3 gigabytes. Um, you see the total warning count. So this is the justification. So the entire pip file has got 336 warnings. And you can see some more information about direct and indirect dependencies as well as licenses. Now, as you go through the dependency tree and go into TensorFlow, you can see we, it pops open with TensorFlows and it's all of its dependencies. So you can see it's got many, so big list. And you can go back to roots as well. But if we stick around at TensorFlow, some new options pop up. First, you get a little graph seeing how far away TensorFlow is from the app or the pip file in this case. And we get some other information such as package stats. So specifically how much does TensorFlow uh, cost to install and how many warnings does it provide? Or is it providing to our overall app, as well as um, information about its dependencies. So something that it doesn't control, but the dependencies have. So you see size warnings and direct and indirect dependencies, as well as licenses for TensorFlow's entire stack. Um, if we go a little bit more specific, let's go into, see, go into TensorBoard. TensorBoard's got some more, you can see TensorBoard is, uh, attached to TensorFlow, which is attached to the app. And you can see the package size, total size, indirect, and direct dependencies. Now you can go all the way down. So I can go down into go off. Um, and go into here and where until you get to like a child. And once you get to a child, you can see it pretty far away, how much it's actually providing to that and like what license it has. Um, so yeah, and then you could, Go back up the tree uh, until you get back up to the roots and you can explore through here. And the idea behind this is you can kind of dig through the the tree of the dependencies and see what where the issues might be coming from, where all our errors are coming from, like the warnings or like why is this such a big package or what's why is there so many packages installed? You kind of see like, oh, TensorBoard is installing a lot. Why is TensorBoard installing a lot? Oh, maybe Google Auth, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it, it might not be the most, uh, I haven't really user tested it, so it might not be too, too intuitive to know what to do to go through this, but there's a little description up here, which might help. Feedback is, is encouraged, accepted. If there's any questions, y'all can let me know now or offline. Um, what I'm interested in, if, if, if I dig my way down to what, whatever it was, uh, Google uh, or the blah, 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 it's, it, it tells me there's 15 warnings on it. Oh, again, what, whatever the count is, right? Eight mm -hmm. warnings. Um, where are they? Can I, can you click on it? And, and I'm going to see all the warnings. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I, 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 I can add links, so I could add a link here that takes you to Google Auth. I can uh, probably add a link here, which now you, this would probably you'd want to go here. Yeah. It would link you to something like this. And yeah, exactly. That, that, 
that list. that would be a nice link because uh, this is now telling me okay there's eight warnings um have a look at them uh, obviously right. some things are good some things are not that good uh mm -hmm. in in google or auth in google auth actually um and i think the the maybe not the decision at this point uh, but what I want to do is really learn well, what's what's wrong with that thing. Is it okay to have these eight warnings, or is it something that's completely off and I need to fix? Um, I mean, not that I have the opportunity to fix that thing or the uh, the possibility to fix that thing, but uh, in this case of Google Auth, it might be like an informational um, aspect. Everything is good. I, I I cannot do anything anyways, but I feel safe with it. It might be different in other cases. Right. So maybe, yeah, just adding a link to Six or Google Auth or whatever it is up there. Yeah, I think the link is a good first step that could be easy to implement. Um, additionally, since our only two, three characteristics of a justification is a warning, error, or info, um, when we add that clustering of justifications, that can probably help us discern what is an actual issue like maybe maybe six has an actionable item or tensorflow mm -hmm. might have a warning that's an actionable item so this could be shown here instead of just a warning count but maybe like yes. hey this one has an actionable item yes stuff like that i like that um because i like the the explorative way um to and and getting to know your software stack um you can really figure out okay it's a huge container image uh, in the end. Uh, the package size of that TensorFlow thing is quite large. Why Why? Why is that? Um, obviously, you have to deal with it. So I'm not going to go into discussions with my ops people that the container size is too large. It's There's simply nothing to do about it. Here's a proof point. It is TensorFlow introducing all that stuff. Um, so, so don't, please, don't bug me with that uh, request to have a minimum container image. Um, stuff like that. Um, I think it's very, very handy stuff to to get your stack to not to get know your stack. Sorry for the word confusion. I'm I'm a random number generator. Um, cool. Thanks for that one. Other questions, comments, um, potential idea. I don't know if it would be useful or not, but potentially showing the ability. Having the ability to show not just the direct dependency count, but the uh, aggregate total dependencies, number of dependencies that each level has to, to show, well, okay, I have 21, 21 direct dependencies, but that's a, that's TensorFlow itself, right? But in total, this implies X number of packages. I think it might be more useful as you navigate down the tree and realize that maybe by installing, um, well, some of the package, you know, by bringing some package, I bring, you know, so many indirect dependencies, which might not be obvious in, in this summary view. You mean like if there was, say there wasn't just TensorFlow and I was in something like, um, This one. This one's got more dependencies um, from the pip file. You can see, I guess this has two, right? Is what you're saying is only two direct ones, but if you go in here, it's got each one of these have two, one, and this one. So I guess showing the total dependency count instead of the, the direct. Yeah, like some of, of what's, yeah, the aggregate. Uh, I, I'm thinking aloud. I'm not honestly sure how useful that would be, but I think it provide, can provide an insight of how deep the tree is below. Yeah, I agree because, I mean, this one, uh, Python GitLab, it, it says two, which you might like, oh, it's equivalent to this one, which has one, two, three, but then you go into this, it's actually got six and requests, and requests has four of them. So it actually does add a lot more. Um, I was playing around with the idea of having maybe, maybe you don't care how many dependencies you have, but maybe how much each 
the size of it is. Or maybe you could even have a drop down here where you could pick between direct, indirect, total, um, different ways, I guess, to sort this uh, dependency list or what information to show here. So maybe it defaults at total, but then you could change it to total size or warning counts or total dependencies, stuff like that. But yeah, good idea. Anything else? Cool. So this is um, Toss Station Ninja slash Search Ninja. I'm I'm German, you know. It's Ninja uh, yeah, uh, the, slash Search. So it's live. It is live. Here's a the link I was playing with is here. If you want to look around at it, um, this is the, the TensorFlow one. Cool. And uh, all the data is coming from the uh, production API. So it's it's. Mm -hmm querying the user API, that's it, right? Yep, so it might, my like first time around, it might load for a bit, but just no. give it a chance. It'll get there. Cool. Um, thanks for that one. Um, yes. Cool, thanks. <laughs>